Hey, welcome back to Two Sides. So glad you could be joining us. I'm Christy Mazurak. I'm Stefan Mihaly. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, smoking bans, whether they're it's at the Gallery Mall, in your car, at properties, at parks. And so to shed a little... Amherst. Yeah, Amherst. 25 feet That's away. Right. Good yep. point. Uh, joining us live now is Anthony Bellani. He's the director of the Erie Niagara Tobacco Free Coalition. Just to shed some light on this issue, sir, thank you for joining us. Greatly appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, let's talk about uh, basically... Um, smoke-free parks here in Erie and Niagara County. What does that mean for the average Joe or Jane who actually goes to a park and the fact that there won't be smoking there? Um, well, what we hope it means is that it's a, it's a more pleasant, family-friendly experience, that uh, kids get to uh, participate in sport activities uh, without uh, seeing people smoking, without adults in the stands uh, smoking. Um, and other people in the stands who are watching the game can do it in comfort without having to breathe other people's smoke. And also, let's uh, uh, count in the benefit of uh, keeping the environment clean from this. Uh, this. This little baggie that I have here was collected uh, in downtown Buffalo in about 10 minutes. So this is the biggest source of litter on the planet. Why should we uh, muck up our beautiful park space, you know, ever vanishing uh, uh, clean environment in our urban and suburban landscapes? Mr. Bellani, I have always said, and I've said it before on the show, you know, I could care less if my doctor at Roswell Park, because some of them, doctors smoke, and, and he could smoke right in the operating room. If he's keeping me alive, uh, I, I say that in jest. But again, do, uh, do you fear, though, that now smokers are going to coagulate more in these pockets? Because you can go on High Street, and that's kind of where all the nurses and doctors are hanging out smoking. Well, and what we do at the coalition is uh, accept that we have a uh, slow, uh, steady path uh, to success. And uh, as you're seeing now, I mean, we're in a bit of a watershed moment. Uh, the, the efforts of uh, our smoke-free parks were joined by my colleagues all across New York State. We've had 19 municipalities uh, join us in establishing some level of uh, smoke-free zones in their parks. And that led to uh, New York State, of all places, um, the, the park system, um, establishing smoke-free zones throughout all of New York State. So it's a stair-step opportunity. Um, so as people coagulate in certain um, um, nooks and crannies, I think those are going to go uh, the way of the horse and buggy as well. Um, the, the point is, is to get smokers away from wherever public highways and byways would be so you don't have to breathe in this noxious smoke and that you don't litter. Um, and not to mention the fire hazard of just cast off cigarette butts. I work very closely with the Building Owners and Managers Association and they would love to see a law that would ban smoking from in front of their buildings in New York State um, because people cast off uh, uh, cigarette butts into their mulch causing fire, into a grating that causes electrical fires. So it's dangerous on a number of levels. And, and dangerous, obviously, obviously, from my perspective, to our health as well. So that, what are some of the benefits then, the health benefits of banning smoking, whether it's a public building or a park or a football stadium? Well, the, the clearest one, uh, as the Surgeon General has told us, there is no safe level of secondhand smoke. So if you're within um, any small proximity of uh, secondhand smoke, whether it be indoors or outdoors, um, and you know, you're going you're gonna to be affected by it, if it's a second, if it's 10 seconds or 10 minutes. So if you're not smoking in a park, people will not be breathing that smoke. That's probably the biggest benefit. And obviously the second benefit is a cleaner environment from uh, uh, cigarette butts that won't be littered. But an another important one is that kids won't see adults smoking. So one less place where that habit is, is uh, modeled for them that they can grow up without even thinking about smoking for that many more years. But on the other side, some would say, they can see it in the music videos, on TV, movies. I mean, because it, it is, smoking is still kind of chic with Hollywood mm. stars. Um, they, so do you go, I mean, are you going out into schools to talk to kids? Uh, we have an arm in the, uh, um, the tobacco control program called mm -hmm. Reality Check. And uh, we support them, but one of their main focuses is to get tobacco uh, images out of magazines and out of movies. Uh, uh, our former health commissioner was, was one of his big issues, um, is to get um, uh, movies with uh, tobacco use in them, uh, rated R. Uh, uh, and we've seen things move in some direction, but it's part of the culture, but it's, uh, 
it's an ever uh, uh, decreasing part of the culture. Well, speaking of culture, I mean, the mindset concerning smoking has definitely changed over mm -hmm. the decades. I mean, I remember as a kid, I mean, my family member smoked and we had a tiny, tiny little house, whereas now they're banning smoking at the Galleria in cars and in, in, in buildings. How has the culture changed when it comes to viewing smoking in public over the past 10, 20, 30 years? Um, well, I, I think you've uh, made the point. Uh, the reality is, and, and this is what's most interesting, is that we were beating the drum about uh, smoke-free outdoor air a few years ago, but now you see uh, people calling us, and the fact that the Galleria is doing it, and many businesses are doing it, it's because they're looking at their own health care costs. Um, and they've initiated all kinds of wellness programs uh, from fitness to uh, obesity to uh, smoking. Um, the more they can drive down those indicators uh, in the uh, uh, workforce, um, the more uh, benefits they're going to get in, and reduce rates uh, for their employees. So they're asking us for help in, in how many indicators can they, how many uh, things can they do um, to help someone quit smoking. So there's cessation, there's cessation counseling, and if they were to ban smoking on their grounds, it's one less uh, trigger for them to uh, step outside the door. They have to go one step further, two steps further. You know, we heard so many people quit when the Clean Indoor Air Act uh, became law in 2003 because they just didn't have that trigger opportunity of sitting at their desk all day long and smoke. Okay. Anthony Bellani, director with the Erie Niagara Tobacco Free Coalition. I'm sure you might be getting some phone calls today for people trying to quit. <laughs> Happy to help. We thank you very Great. much for coming out of two sides. And we'll make sure, I'll, some way, somehow, I'll find the we'll link, have the and link. We'll put it on our Yep, uh, we'll have it on Facebook our Facebook page. page. Uh,